Hello and welcome to a new video series from Do The Loan and Yourself. Here I am working on my project which I would like to bring closer to you. It is a garden and terrace table that has two storage boxes integrated. These boxes are very practical and can be used for several purposes. You can either use them for decorative purposes or as a shelf for eating utensils or, and that's the best thing about it, as a cool box for your drinks. This is very practical at parties. Now, if you want to know how I realized this, stay tuned. I would first like to show you in the picture how I imagined the base of the table. Four large wooden beams measuring 10 by 10 cm, which are to serve as table feet. These are easily connected with two shorter and two longer wooden frames. The cross strut mounted for stability has not been placed in the center, since the table should contain two storage boxes, which are not in the same size. We will get to that in a moment. The feet are shortened to the desired height using a cross-cut saw. As soon as the basic framework is completed, I place the wooden beams found on a scrap yard on it. I now temporarily transfer the lower frame and cross strut upwards to know where exactly I should sew the holes for the storage boxes. As a storage box, I choose flower boxes. Place them as you wish and then circle them with a pencil to mark the outer line. Now you create the cutting line by moving the line one centimeter inwards from each side. So that the jigsaw can start somewhere, I drilled a hole in the thickness of the saw blade in every corner, then sew along the line. After you have debored all cut surfaces and provided several support beams, you can finally connect these wooden beams to the basic framework. Process all beams that are not flush with one another using an electric clamp.
as you have already noticed. The surface of the beams is unusual, so I continue to remove at least 2 to 3 cm with the electric planner until the clean wooden surface was visible. completely smooth surface was a bit blurry, so I decided to set a few sets with the resin by removing several smaller to medium sized areas with a chisel. Later they were filled with a colored epoxy resin. The epoxy resin is usually supplied in two components that are ready to use. The so-called A component usually contains the epoxy resin, the B component, the hardener, which is to be added to the resin in a mixing ratio. In this case, the mixing ratio is 2 to 1, which means that the A component must be twice as much as the B component. So, if you take 100 ml resin, we have to take 50 ml hardener. Definitely wear gloves when mixing and then applying. You can use a conventional brush to apply it. The air bubbles in the epoxy that form during application usually pop out again after a few minutes. With a hair dryer, you can help carefully here. As soon as the resin has dried out, the surface can be sanded completely with a coarser sandpaper. Strip on areas can be worked with the help of the chisel. Then, I started a final grinding process where I moved from the coarsest with 120 grit in small steps to the finest with 1000 grit. From a grain size of 300, it is recommended to do the sanding with water. Wet sanding with waterproof sandpaper is often the best approach to sanding hardener epoxy. Wet sanding removes bobs while sanding, reduces clogging of the sanding paper and drastically reduces the dust expelled into the air. The sandpaper lasts significantly longer and you can immediately see what the sanding result is like. Finally, you can finish all this step with a polishing paste.
since I absolutely wanted to have a fearing optic, I carefully burned the finished surface with a gas burner. Here you should slowly but surely move the flame from left to right in order to get a uniform picture. In order to protect the surface, a painted protection is recommended. I would advise you to paint two twice. Optionally, you can grind everything with a very high grit at the end so that all bumps disappear and you get a very smooth surface.